guys, my name is Michelle and welcome to my week in the life of a med student vlog. So yeah, I decided to vlog this week because it's so busy, like I actually can't even explain how busy it is. This is my a &E week which is why it's so busy, so basically I have placement as normal in the morning and then some evenings I have an a and &E placement. Um, I'm both like nervous and excited. I'm a third year medical student so this is my first time at A&E, obviously as a med student, not as a patient. I've been to Amy before. So yeah, um, I'm gonna take you along with me for as much as possible, but obviously a lot of my days are gonna be clinical, like seeing patients, and obviously I can't film patients. So I'm gonna be trying to like update you on like what I've seen and how my day's been going, but obviously my first priority is always patient safety, so if I do share any details of my day or any patients I've seen then it will be fictional so I'll be changing details and stuff so that by no way can you identify the patient but like the learning outcomes will be the same so yeah I just wanted to put that little disclaimer there so no one worries about confidentiality because that's my biggest worry and I'm gonna make sure that I always protect patient confidentiality okay Right, I'm walking to the hospital from where I've parked, so let my 15 hour day begin. Hey guys, so I just got back to my car now, it is 20 to 1. Um, so this morning I joined the ward round with a consultant and a junior doctor and I also found out that since last week another bay has become COVID so now basically I was always that half my ward was COVID and half was non-COVID so I was always on the non-COVID side but now that another half of my non-COVID side has become COVID there's not a lot of patients to see so I joined the ward round but um, I would go through like the prepping of the patient, learning about the patient, their blood results, look at their scans, their history look at the medications but I wouldn't be able to actually go see the patient which is fine like I feel like I learned a lot from what I did get to do. The doctors today were absolutely lovely they took a lot of time to teach me or ask me questions so yeah it's definitely one of the better um, placements that I've been on I really enjoyed it. The last patient that we prepped didn't have Covid so I could go in and see them with the doctor and then the doctor asked like would it be okay if I came and had a little chat so when he left I stayed and had a little chat with that lady and it was so sad. <laughs> we started talking about her medical conditions but um, it just became apparent that she had a lot of anxiety and quite low mood. She was a, an older lady and she kind of said that she felt like it was her time to go and it was quite hard to have that conversation. She was crying and all I could do was uh, hold her hand. Obviously with the Covid situation a lot of older people have had a really hard year. She said she'd been out twice in the in the past year but she was such a lovely lady who explained to me that she didn't feel like she could be honest with her family because she didn't want them to worry about her so that's why she felt like it would just be easier if it was her time to go and that was heartbreaking. So at least as a medical student I have all the time in the world to sit there and hold this lady's hand and listen to listen to how she's feeling and things that she probably hadn't told anyone else. So it's like five o'clock now and I'm walking to my Amy placement. So in this time I haven't really vlogged much but it's been so busy. So I've got I got back from my placement. I had to have lunch, had CBL for a couple of hours, it ran over as well. Then I had to quickly have dinner and then I am um, yeah, now I'm ready. So I'm walking to a &E and then I need to get changed into my scrubs. And then I'm gonna start and I'm like really nervous. Like I've never done it before and I get nervous in these situations. <laughs> but um, hopefully it'll be fun. Like everyone I know who's gone has really loved it. So yeah, let's go.
Hi. So I just got back from a &E. It's midnight now. I'm tired and I just didn't really like it. So there's a few different parts of a and &E. and I was on ambulance triage, which is basically as the ambulance can't speak. As the name suggests, it's where the ambulance brings the patients um, and it's like where they're first taken, which on the plus side means that there are a lot of like blood um, cannulas and ECGs to be done, which are all skills that I can do as a third year. So I tried a lot of bloods, but a lot of them failed, um, which is absolutely fine. Like that's just part of learning. I did get a couple thankfully. Um, I observed a couple of cannulas but I just like didn't feel confident yet to do my own and I like did a couple of ECGs with other people as well but I didn't do any independently. So like skills side of it I guess was quite successful like that's what that's why I went to ambulance triage because I wanted to like practice my skills. Um, but then on the other hand I just I kind of feel like Grey's Anatomy and all them has really hyped up like the ED to be this like really exciting place where you see all these like traumas and accidents and stuff like that but in reality it was just like a lot of like um, heartbreaking dementia cases and a lot of people with heart attacks and drug overdoses and yeah one guy was like really inappropriate with me like he like said and like did things that were really inappropriate and that was actually like my very first patient so I guess I kind of like set the tone to be like really negative but yeah I kind of feel like disgusting right now so I'm just literally gonna go in the shower and then go straight to bed I might have a little cry I don't know hey guys happy Tuesday so I my alarm went off at 8 but I decided to sleep in a bit longer so I got up at 10 um, now it's 11 so I just like showered, got ready for the day um, and I just found out that I have some bedside teaching this afternoon that I literally didn't know. So the majority of the time you're just like told which ward you're allowed to be on, you go onto that ward and you just do your own thing. Like You can talk to the doctors there, like ask them if there's anything for you to do or ask them any questions you have but most of the time like they get on with what they're doing and you get on with what you're doing which is like in third year is like taking histories which means talking to patients and finding out their story or examining them so practicing like a respiratory examination or cardiac examination and seeing if you can find any findings which might indicate what disease they have but bedside teaching is scheduled time where like a doctor knows that they have to use that time to teach you which means that I should probably prepare something but I don't know what I just remembered I need to do my lateral flow test so I thought I'd show you guys like if if you haven't done one um so like this is the big box of them that you get I actually worked in a COVID test center for a little bit so I'm kind of a pro so you need a swab, you need some of the, <laughs> this is so weird, of the extraction solution. I bet you never thought YouTubers would be doing this in 2021. You need one of the cartridges, so you just open it and it looks like this. You want to focus that would be great so yeah looks like this and then you need one of these tubes so you get like the little tube and the little stopper the first thing i do is i put six drops of the extraction solution into the tube so one two three four five six and then like, i just leave this like on the side it doesn't tip out now it's the fun part so this is your swab and usually with a COVID test you do the back of the throat and the nose. I think for this one you can just do both nostrils but I still do the back of the throat and the nose like because I want to make sure that um you know. So I've just done my throat as you can probably tell from the tears streaming down my face <laughs> and now I'll do my nose. So you just stick it up until you feel a bit of resistance. It doesn't have to be too high like I've 
there's this common misconception that you need to like stick it like up to your brains and like that is absolutely not true. So when you've done that now you need to pop this into the solution and then like stir it around for a little bit and then you need to kind of get like all your saliva like off the swab into the, the solution so you kind of like pinch at the top and you like pull it through like so put your spit and like runs down the tube into the so then I put the little dropper lid on like so and then in your cartridge you need to drop two drops into the bottom bit one two and now we leave that alone and we need to look back in 20 to 30 minutes to see if there's a positive result hopefully not and then I can go to my bits of teaching Are you good? Alright guys, so I'm all ready to go to placement now, so I will update you with how my bedside teaching goes. Fingers crossed this placement goes better than yesterday. I can't do another bad placement again. So yeah, it'll be fine. See you later. Stay still. Hi, I'm back from placement now. Um, where do you start? There was a new ward I'd never been on there before, and let me just say, I'm not a big fan. It was so warm when I got in there like straight away as soon as I walked through the doors I was like wow it's really warm here and it was really dark I didn't see a window like the whole like five hours I was there anyway so like these things together with the fact that I was watching a canny lid being put in it's not like a particularly gross um procedure or anything but my point is I felt like super faint I definitely don't drink enough water like I'd eaten something before I'd gone but the only water I drank was when I took some tablets so I really 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 need to start drinking more water basically we were meant to go there for bedside teaching so a doctor had obviously like agreed to teach us and then we got to the ward and we were asking for this doctor and no one knew who the doctor was so that was a bit annoying and then in the end they were like yeah the doctor isn't coming so they turned to the doctor next to them and were like do you mind teaching the students so obviously we just bring like we'd just been sprung on this doctor who didn't have anything ready for us. So then he sent us to talk to this one patient. This patient was an elderly man who had a uh, an exacerbation of COPD. Um, that's very common. I've seen quite a few of them over my four weeks on respiratory um, ward. So just talking with them about their problems and about their home situation. So then we went to go find the doctor who sent us to the patient to present back to him and then he'd gone home. So fortunately another doctor said that we could present back to him so we presented back and usually like you just present back and the doctor's like yeah okay do this differently or that was fine or whatever. But this doctor like took teaching us seriously and he like started teaching us so much which was very helpful but it was definitely past time that we were supposed to leave but he like really spent a long time teaching us which was very informative to be fair in the end it wasn't too bad obviously beginning it off with nearly fainting again 
was a bit annoying but in the end we found a doctor to finally teach us which is great. I just ate dinner and then I was just sat in bed watching a bit of Netflix. I'm watching Shadowhunters by the way, I'm addicted to it. I read The Mortal Instruments last year and loved it and now I'm watching Shadowhunters on Netflix which like is not as good as the books obviously but I really like it. Anyway, I'm a little bit obsessed with that so I was watching a couple of episodes while I was eating dinner and then I was just checking my emails and I remembered that I've signed up to a like online like lecture tonight at 7 and that is how to enhance your, your portfolio. Um, I don't know, it's actually run by like, it's, it's being done by a surgeon so I guess it is like mostly for surgery but... I don't want to do surgery but I still think that the things that the surgeons say will probably be like transferable to whatever I do decide that I want to do. So yeah, I've got that at 7pm which is in like 5 minutes so, cool. So I literally fell asleep. Oh my god, from what I did see from the surgery um, portfolio night, like it was really good. And then, I don't know, like I was just a bit like bored. So I thought I'll listen to this while I'm in bed and then I just wake up and it's 9 o'clock. I did just want to talk about the surgical portfolio and like that I went to. It was really really helpful. Um, so I'm not sure how like different other specialities will be when it comes to portfolio. I'm kind of guessing that surgery is one of the most competitive so like if I have the bits to tick off that would get me into surgery then I'd probably stand a good chance of getting into other specialities as well. Anyway, so the point is they were talking about things like publications, um, presentations, like like a, like post presentations, oral presentations, what else did they say? like national awards like we get so many emails about like essays and stuff like that and i didn't realize that they were so important um conferences and then just like showing an interest in like actually for, for surgery is like having evidence of being in like 15 or more surgeries um like choosing your ssc and that choosing your elective so yeah i mean like they were saying like just do the stuff that interests you oh audits that was another thing that gave a lot of points if you'd done a couple of audits so yeah they were saying like just do the stuff that interests you find a mentor so like i don't know like a consultant or something that you get on with and then they can say like oh there's this course coming up or oh, like help me on this project and like they were saying like don't do it for points basically just like follow like what you're passionate in but i think it's always a good idea to have the knowledge behind you of like what will get you points so that you don't end up like passing up these opportunities like someone said that they did a massive project and then they never wrote it up and published it and like they should have um because they'd done all the work anyway they may as well have got the points for it so yeah even though i fell asleep it was great and i'm glad that i went i did learn a lot and i'm still not properly awake <sighs> but i think i will try and journal Hey 
guys, so it's half three on Wednesday morning. Um, I woke up at eight, so I'm still a little bit tired. But yeah, I'm on my way to placement, so I'm going to the respiratory wards. I've been there for the last four weeks. This is my last placement there. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to see if my patient that I spoke to on Monday is still there. Obviously she's feeling quite down, so I, I want to go check on her definitely. And that's it really. I'll just see what my place of one wants to do. And then um, then I'm going to come home after that placement and then I'm going to go back for Amy this afternoon. Which I'm a bit scared about, but it's okay. So I'm back in the car now after my placement um, and actually went really well for a change. I really enjoyed it. It's a bit bittersweet because it's my last day on the ward after four weeks of being on that ward and I feel like I'm finally like getting how things work and stuff like that. And um, I even helped with like a patient's discharge notes today, which I've never done before. I felt like a bit of a responsibility, even though I was supervised at like every moment, but still. So yeah, I got to see the lovely lady that I saw on Monday. Um, she was like really upset on Monday and really scared and then um, I like saw her today and she was feeling much better and she said that she was thinking of me yesterday and like I just can't believe that I left an impact on someone the amount of healthcare professionals that these patients see you know I can't I, I couldn't believe it when she remembered me and then as a medical student we have to have a couple of longitudinal patients which mean you get their phone number and you contact them throughout the year to see how they're doing so of course I had to ask this lovely lady to be my longitudinal patient and she said yes and then um, she had a few questions for me and I couldn't answer them myself but I promised I'd go to the doctors and I asked them so I asked the doctors which also like it helped me with my knowledge and it obviously helped the patient as well and then I was on the ward round so it took me a really long time to get back to her but when we got back to her she said to the doctors did Michelle ask you the questions and they were like oh they just looked at me and I was like yeah I've asked them I'll talk to you afterwards so then um the doctors all left and I stayed with her and then I was discussing all the questions that she had and she said I answered all of her questions and then I noticed that the consultant had stayed behind he was like taking forever <laughs> to wash his hands and then he was discussing like her case with me afterwards um so I don't know what he thought of like my patient interaction like he never said but um yeah I don't know something about that just makes me feel good the fact that he was invested enough to stay, I guess. And then she kept on saying, like, oh, yeah, and you're going to speak to me soon, aren't you, um, in a couple of weeks. And then, yeah, I said that I'd say goodbye to her at the end. And when I I said goodbye to everyone else, and then I went to her, and she wasn't there. So then I had to stay around for another five minutes while she came out of the toilet so then I could say a proper goodbye. And she is going home today, so she's in great spirits. And I finished on a, on a high note as well. Okay, so I've just got some lunch. Um, it's just stir fry that I meal prepped a couple of days ago. And I'm not going to watch Shadowhunters while I eat this. Because I feel like that's where I've been going wrong. Like, I've been coming in watching Netflix and then I've been, like, too comfortable. So I'm going to eat this and then do some work. I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but I'm going to do something. That you're distant There's something about you that's different I see it in your eyes Something isn't right Tell me again what I'm missing Cause you're fading on We've been here before Tell me again, just tell me again And I Make it right Don't go through the door Tell me again Just tell me again And I'll make it right It is a lie when you tell me That nothing is wrong Just leave it be But I see it in Tell me again, just tell me again and I 
So I'm ready to go to placement again, a &E again. I'm just literally praying that it's better than it was on Monday. I'm sure it will be. So yeah, let's go, see what happens. So I'm just on my walk and I just realised that I forgot to update you about Amy last night. So I went for a couple of hours but I didn't enjoy it again. Um, I feel like I just need someone with experience with me who can like tell me like where I'm going wrong. And like show me the ways basically. Because um, it's just a bit horrible being thrown in like the deep end. So I'm going to ask one of my um, friends in like the up years to come with me one time. And then I'm sure like I'll have a lot more confidence. So yeah, like I didn't enjoy it, but at least like, I didn't have high expectations this time. So yeah, that's all there is to say really. And all I've done today is we had an online session. <laughs> we had an online session and then um, I'm on this walk now and then yes. I've got anatomy later on. So I can't film on anatomy, but I'll show you as much as I can. We're only there for like an hour um, and we're learning about the scrotum today. So that's exciting. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it, but I'm a bit scared. Honestly, they have binocular vision. <laughs> I think they have a It's coming well to you. Down. Yeah, it's coming oh. to you. Oh, 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 oh,
rise and it didn't really work as you can probably tell from the clips um, it was very cloudy well I got a lovely little catch up with my friend anyway I'm gonna finish the vlog here because I've just got online learning for the rest of the day and it's kind of boring and um, we've already seen a lot of clips of me studying and whatever so I don't want to bore you with any more of that so um, I really hope that you've enjoyed this video if you did make sure that you subscribe and like because I'll be posting a lot more med school content soon and um, leave in the comments below any more videos ideas that you have for me and yeah I really hope I'll see you next time and that you enjoyed this video so bye you're the rose in